your knee your knees and hips are flexing but your trunk's doing an isometric hold like your trunk's holding that position and then what ends up happening if like you're doing an anti-rotation movement like a like a payoff rotation okay so i'm facing in a split squat forward and i'm doing a rotational you know press from this side i don't that is another means of isometric stability through my hips while I, I would be actually rotating there, but my isometric position would then be in my hips. Welcome to the Garage Strength Podcast. And you might even be listening to us on Spotify or the Apple Podcast or any other streaming service. Make sure that you guys give us that sweet five-star review. It does help us grow the show. And also, this show is sponsored by Peak Strength. Peak Strength is our strength training app that provides easy access freak training you can sign up today at peakstrength.app the google play store or the apple ios store and you can start that journey to attain peak strength with five free workouts earl yes dane how are you doing i'm doing great you forgot to tell everyone how i'm a three-time world champ oh yeah what's going <laughs> yeah, on that's there? shit i feel i, feel I didn't like, do that in the last one either that's all right uh, i'm feeling it's it now. i feel like i've been forgotten like i just <laughs> shrivel up shit. get all small make myself feel insignificant <laughs> oh damn no, now I feel I'm bad. Good. Don't feel bad. I would just you shouldn't feel any shame. And we're here with three time co author, world champion of the go. year. That sounds more like it. Earl Kunkel. That's, that's it. Do what I tell you to do. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, we gotta do an imagine here first. All okay. Right? Okay. This one gets a little silly. I'm gonna read it. So anyone who's watching me read. Everybody loves to make fun of you when you when you read it. Do they? Okay, I want you to do... I want actual comments that prove that. Okay, I, I want you to do the, the reading, yeah. and then I want to do my version. Of the imagine? Yeah. Or reading this? Well, like a, uh, like a uh, lot of people, the topic that we're going to discuss, a lot of people are resistant to it. Okay. And I want to I paint the reasoning behind why they should be doing it. All right, it. you ready for this? Yeah. All right. Imagine you're out one night with your special friend. And some nincompoop starts talking. Nincompoop. That sounds like something my dad would say. I know. That's the funny part about <laughs> it. You're self-assured and unbothered and let it pass. But this nincompoop is relentless. They insult your t-shirt. They insult your special someone. They spill your water and they step on your shoe. They fail to say sorry. Next thing you know, violence has erupted Whoa. and you didn't start it. Like anyone who has ever been in a fight knows, it is exhausting. Yeah. Um, you end up in precarious positions, and you need the ability to be explosive from odd and elongated positions, especially if like you're in a scrap. You need not only be mobile in these positions, not only stable, but you also need to be able to like fire off with some power. Dane, how do isometrics help make this happen? How do isometrics help make that happen? So, I mean, I was thinking about MMA or, or wrestling when you were describing that. And if you're in a position where, um, let's say you're in like a clench or a hold for a long period of time, or even, you know, wrestlers will get like a, a single leg here and they're holding and holding and holding and holding and holding. And they're waiting for just the, the little subtle move to, to then, you know, to pop out of. And I think that that... I, I wanted I wanted to, to, to bounce off this and, and, and with this answer it would be there's often times that you'll see an individual is going to be stuck with um, a bench press or let's say somebody um, a good example uh, Jake used to get pinned with cleans and he would get about halfway and just get absolutely trashed and not be able to stand that up but over time uh, what we started to, to play around with was sort of two types of isometrics. And if you're somebody who, you know, you get to a sticking point, what you can do is sort of figure out, all right, what's the 20 degrees where that sticking point typically is going to be as far as the joint angle. And this is how to relate it to the fighting is that you can using the front squat or using the clean example, you could catch a clean or you could get into a front squat position and push into a pin and you're pushing into that pin which then makes it so that you can't get any any higher because you're pushing up you're pushing up and the and the pins are pushing back down into you and so that creates that isometric position 
and you're continuously pushing and your body doesn't understand that, you know, there's, it's an immovable object. So now you start to recruit high threshold motor units at a very, very fast pace to burst through that, those pins. And so that trains your body how to recruit quicker. And in the case of Jake, after we did those, those types of squats, squats from a box at that specific height as well and rock bottom squats. So those three things for 12 weeks, he got to the point where he could catch a clean at his max front squat and stand it up. Now he still sucked at the jerk, but he was never ever getting pinned with cleans. He, you know, any, if he was catching it, he was standing it up. It might look bad, but he could work through that position and, and, and looking at uh, grinding through pins or grinding off of the box or doing rock bottom squats, you know, starting from the bottom and coming up. Those are all very unique ways to try and improve your, your, your rate coding. And that rate coding would be specific to those joint angles. Every time you said rock bottom, I saw someone getting rock bottomed. <laughs> like I just saw the, the WWE yeah, rock. Big like, time move. Yeah. Just doing it from the top ropes. He didn't do it from the top rope uh, that often. Jason, do you believe he just said that? I, out? <laughs> which one's the rock bottom? Oh, oh my goodness, Jason! Which one's the rock bottom? It, it's what Dwayne the Rock Johnson did, Jason. It's base. I, I should rock bottom you right now. I feel it would be really cool. Right through the table, it'd be funny. <laughs> you like so? We'd be like shoulder to shoulder. Your face would be like looking one way. Mine's the other way. I'd like throw your arm up and I'd put like my arm on the oh, opposite end of the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like I'd lift you up. Yeah. And, and sort of like sweep. It's like you sweep back and, and then, then just, slam them. Yeah. On yeah. Back. Okay. I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. And the other guy's sort of flailing. So it looks even crazy. Yeah. You got to sell it. Yeah. I remember that one. You got to like Shawn Michaels like sell. Yeah. When you, he would get stunned. What was the Boston, the Boston crab? We used to do that in wrestling for fun. We would climb oh. around. Yeah. That's a submission hold. And yeah. we would, like, guys would lay on our exactly. stomach. Lion tamer. And we would pull on their. Yes. We would we would pull their feet to the back of their head. Man. Yeah. And just pretzel them up. Yeah. What is that called? Like, do they call it a bow and arrow when you do that? Uh, yeah. In freestyle, that would be a bow and yeah. arrow. Yeah. I was watching a, a Kerry Colot video yeah. yesterday, and he would talk about how you would do that to turn people. Yeah. And he's like, when you're practicing it, you know, understand. Yeah. But when you're competing, it's. The ref's all job in. to protect them. Yeah. Like you'd go all You're out. All out. One hundred. I was like, wow, that was, yeah, <laughs> fist pump on that one. Like they're not your friend right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh. I mean that's a good example too. There, where in a in a sport like wrestling, if you get into that position, you have to have some type of isometric strength to hold for a very long period of time. And actually, I I recently. I watch a, a decent amount of like UFC breakdowns. And so I'll watch Henry Cejudo and he was actually talking about himself and he was talking about using the cage. And when you get into a certain position in his last fight, he's like, I got into this position and I had made the decision to have a loose grip because I knew that I was going to be in that position for like 15 to 20 seconds. And I didn't, I didn't calculate that he was going to be moving that leg. I had thought he wouldn't move that leg because his, his defense would be another, would be another, um, another position based off of where he was. So he had a, a easier hold. And he talks about how you can make that decision very quickly and go high hold or, or light hold. Because if you, if you don't have the strength at that point in the fight, you know, from isometric based training, well, then you want to go with a lighter hold. And he ended up in that point, uh, the guy had, kicked out of the hold very quickly, swept him, and then actually took him down. And he sort of talked about how, you know, in, in the, this case of the MMA fight, it was against Said Aljamain Sterling. His isometric strength and endurance there. wasn't there yeah. and ended up leading to him sort of losing points, like yeah. losing the advantage in yeah, the fight. Yeah, I want to say it was the third round, and I think him he won, I want to say the fourth and the fifth round. So, yeah, at that point, that, that was exactly the case. And it's like... It's interesting with isometrics because they can help you become more explosive. And, and actually, Doctor B, my you know my throws coach, one of his most prominent papers that is on PubMed is actually around isometric pulls and how it potentiates for I think it was jumps or or clean pulls something like that. And they would do this pull into an immovable object for six seconds and then they pull it out. And it reminds me of 
the tennis uh the tennis paper that we just broke down on how to hit harder for tennis and they used isometric movements to potentiate to actually lead to faster that's the one with the bands right yeah well it was a it was actually like a nylon position that they could not move okay but they would hold it for six seconds and they even tested it was like six seconds 12 seconds and 18 and the six seconds is when they would get the absolute best response out of that for the, it, that was related to the serve right that they was would do it before yeah they to would hitting serve. harder yep and they and the interesting part with that is that they were only testing serves that were accurately placed in the box so it was only a positive service and that's where it's also like all right speed matters but so does accuracy in basically every single sport you know speed matters in fighting in tennis but accuracy also matters in fighting and in tennis. Yeah, you got to hit them on the chin to knock them out. Yeah, like. exactly. And so that's also one of those other factors that comes in is that if you can understand the isometric um, positions and the joints, and I do believe that this is where a sports specific, like the, the actual angle and the actual muscles, the muscles, the joint angle, and the the I do believe the time also plays a major role there. So I have a question. When I think of like, how do I say it? Isometric. I think of a lot with the torso first. Okay. And I guess stuff around dynamic trunk control. Yep. But more around like anti-rotational stuff. Yeah. Keeping the body yeah, upright, especially like in a fight, like later in a match, yeah. like and how then that all comes into play. Talk to me a little bit about that, and maybe we could start up start off with like anti-rotation from an isometric standpoint. Well, when you were just when you were just describing that, the first thing I thought about is that if you're doing a front squat, your knee, your knees and hips are flexing, but your trunk's doing an isometric hold, like your trunk's holding that position. And then what ends up happening if like you're doing an anti-rotation movement, like a like a payoff rotation. Okay, so I'm facing in a split squat forward, and I'm doing a rotational you know press from this side. I don't that is another means of isometric stability through my hips while I, I would be actually rotating there, but my isometric position would then be in my hips. Now, another thing that you could do is do like an offset uh, exercise where you hold a split position and you have weight on one side, but not on the other, and you've got to be stable with it. That's where the, the trunk position comes into play. And I think that the trunk responds so well to isometric movements Stu Stuart mcgill uh he's got a book low uh, back disorders and he's probably the most popular most famous scientist around back issues and glute amnesia he talks about how well the back responds to isometric training after you do a concentric because it's holding an isometric pattern the whole the whole day like my neck is almost always in an isometric situation uh and your back and your erector spinae, those muscles are always maintaining that, that upright posture to the best of their ability. So it's like they respond really well also to uh, to isometric training. When you said that, it made me think of Lou, how you would, you'd always see him do like the back extensions. Yeah. And it would always finish, like just hold it. Hold it. And then they pile more yeah. weight on top of them. All the five kilo plates. Yeah, just, just over keep stacking. <laughs> yeah. And I think that... That it's funny because that's the exercise Stuart McGill. So that you know they very likely never crossed paths. Very likely McGill never met Lu Jiaojun. But he, in his research, found that this is the absolute best movement to increase you know the strength of your erectors, the strength of your even connecting into your glutes. And this is the movement that sports performance coaches identified for weightlifting, which takes a lot of back strength uh, to to execute. Uh, and it's essentially let's say you do 10 glute ham raises and then you would hold that for 25 or 30 seconds and that's going to blow you up yeah i think that i think it's like uh i i love that movement sorry yeah it's a cool one yeah i remember when you'd write programmings and you'd tell people what weight to do and if you didn't do it you were a weakling <laughs> it's funny cause and you sometimes you'd ask and i'd be like that's a lot of weight how am i going to get that on my back and then you'd have to go recruit someone to like help you do it. Yeah. And then you'd be like, "What do you want me to do?" I'm like, "I need this on my back." And they like look at you funny because like yeah. you're getting in the you know you're going in that position. And it's just like I don't know what to tell you. This is what it says. I have to do <laughs> yeah, this. I gotta like, do it. Oh, that's bad. That's funny. Though, at the same time, yeah. Going back to the an original scenario that you provided, even with the re with with the fight, 
if you if I, I was thinking about bench press, a lot of people what we talked about with the Jake scenario, some people will struggle with a lockout, some people struggle with coming off the chest. And that's even where Anthony Dottillo talks about this a lot in power racks. It's like coming into a position, you hit the pins and you have to push as hard as you can into the pins while you're bench pressing. And then you lower back down slowly and then you explode back up and you lower back down slowly. Now your time under tension is really, really high. But also, when you're hitting the immovable object, that's where your body starts to recruit more. And if you can get a couple more reps out of that, then those motor units, not only are they getting recruited, they're getting imprinted in the future that that has to be normal. We have to be able to recruit those high threshold motor units all the time, not just from a dormant scenario. And then that's when you start to increase your, your bench as well. Or you also improve your, your bench technique through that, that motor pattern that where, you're, where you typically are weaker. How do you convince an athlete to take an empty bar and be like, I need you to bench this into these pins as hard as you can and keep pressing as hard as you can and then like realize this is going to have a positive effect? Because especially a young kid, I could see that and be like, this is a joke. No, I would say most young kids don't need to be doing it. Okay. I would argue that. I think typically what I like to do – it would be with a contrast where you would do that. And let's say you do five reps pressing for six seconds. You'd rest a minute to two minutes and then you go do explosive pushups to a box. That's where you're going to see that, that payoff, I think. Or if you've got somebody who struggles with size, you could do dumbbell work fast, like 10 to 12 rep dumbbells on the presses. So it's like, where would you put that at a programming day? I would put that more so comprehension and exposure phase uh, during 2a 2b would you do it on the upper body day on the power day or the on the power day yeah for sure yeah definitely during that period and i was you know i was actually even thinking about this one of the one of the other better ways with isometrics is that they're so good at forcing your body into a position that your body wants to be in not that you want to be in so if you do like a a jerk pause in the split you have to do it for six seconds and hold that. The bar might go forward if you're extending your back knee. The bar will come back, sit over your hips, and it's easier to hold that position for that designated time frame. So then the athlete starts to feel, oh, when I do a jerk pause and a split, my body knows that this position's easier. So I can hold this position isometrically a lot easier. So then now the body is teaching them better technique, not the coach, not the cues. Not even the exercise, really. It's just the isometric part of the the modality of the rep. And that's another big factor is that your nervous system gets smarter because it has to hold that position for a longer period. So for anyone who's ever trained garage strength with Dane, you know you get pause in the jerk, like in the split. It's like a given. It comes up all the time. And it's just like, well, how long? Yeah. How long? Yeah, a long time. Yeah. I mean, even pause below the knee is another one. Another reason why I like to do pause below the knee for a snatch or for a clean. It's my favorite lift ever. Yeah, is because <laughs> of the position holding it and you recruit better from your back. Think back to what we were talking about with Stu McGill and Lu Zhao Jun. It's the same position as you would be in with a glute hand, but now I'm pausing below the knee for six or seven seconds. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. My back's getting stronger. I'm waking up boom, I explode out of that position that I'm holding, and then I can transfer that over to a full snatch. But it goes to, if I'm pausing in a bad position, the bar is going to start to drift forward. You start to pause in a better position because of that. And then you can, what I would do, along with the programming, what I would do then is go, okay, let's say exposure phase, comprehension phase. We do the pause below the knee. Well, then that transition into the ascension phase, well, now we're going to do like a Dane snatch with the pumps below the knee and then after the pumps then we might move to a one box or to you know if this is a variation day or to a low hang even possibly without the pause and that's how you progress people through those isometrics wow you just gave like 20 weeks of training there real quick (laughs) yeah like low key yeah good job dan i'm proud of you see this is why everybody should be uh subscribing to our garage Frank podcast because not only are they gonna enjoy the conversation but they're gonna get it you're real funny. You tell good stories, too. I don't know about that. No, I like your stories. You make me laugh. <laughs> yeah, you and three other people. That's all right. That's where Caitlin's, Caitlin's like, oh, I'm glad you think that's funny. Well, 
you should tell her to go like, look at like all me your subs. Ex- like me expelling Flatus earlier. Flatus. That's a funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're bringing that back up yeah. again. Your yeah. cauliflower farts. <laughs> yeah. Cauliflower all, farting. All the fiber for your fart fuel. Yeah, there we go. Man. Yeah. All right. The other thing, we were talking about the torso isometrics. Let's talk about having an upright posture, like through the abs. I'm going to try and get one right And now. what that does for like oxygen delivery or like just body position, how that could help if it does help. Okay, you know what's interesting? They just did a paper Uh-oh. on – Dude, so think about, think about when you played football, right? Like – Hands on your heads. Yeah. Hands on your heads. So they literally just did a research paper on hands on your heads versus hands on your knees. So I will say I've heard that hands on your knees is actually better because yes. it's a mental type of rest too. So I didn't from read the like, paper yet. I didn't read this paper at all, yeah. but it's more like a, a comfort thing. It's an easier. So there's less like stress about it. Yeah, that makes sense. So I haven't read it. But I know based off of the abstract that it was the hands on the knees won out. Is the superior way? Yeah. Now I always knew more than my coach. <laughs> well, just knew yeah. it. The other thing that to remember there yeah. <laughs> is even when you have hands on your knees, you're in an isometric position. You're using less energy to be upright. And you just have hip flexion. Changing your posture from here to coming forward. Dane just flex for all of you listening yeah. on. Like, doesn't doesn't change your lung capacity. Um, but now if I'm sitting like this and I'm breathing through my mouth the whole time, yo, I'm a mouth breather. And sadly, people who breathe through their mouths have a lower IQ. Like that's actually fact. That's geez. actually real. So you're telling me doing yoga where they're teaching me how to breathe through my nose all the time is making me smarter? 100%. That's awesome. To There's know. a really good book on breathing, uh, anatomy of breathing, and and people will talk about how you can fix mouth breathing. Also, a lot of mouth breathing is related to uh, like bad allergies. Is this the point in the episode where I invite you again to go do yoga? To go do yoga and I come up with excuses yeah. not, not to. But going back to what you're talking about is like learning how to properly breathe and learning proper posture consistently can help with your motivation and help with creativity. You know, a lot of people when they are slouched and then they get into a situation where they're like, all right, I got to buckle down They're They'll literally do that naturally. They don't think about it. They're like, all right, I'm getting a little lazy. I'm getting a little tired. I need to change my posture, my positioning. And then they wake up a little bit because they start to breathe a little bit better through their nose. I want to tell everyone that who wants to be more creative, you should start doing Olympic weightlifting because your back gets so strong. You just you almost just sit up. you can't help but do it anymore. Yeah, sit up I'm right. at the point. My middle daughter makes fun of the way I walk because she's like, your chest is always like, like sticking just back. Out. I'm like, I spent years kind of training. That, that became the norm. Like I yeah. can't fight it anymore. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's, it's also a good thing. Yeah. You should. Have Dane that. walks that way too, even though he can't clean anymore. <laughs> it's all the pull-ups, right? <laughs> yeah. It's all, I'm trying to hide my bent elbow. No, that's like that's your calling. Per- that's a part. permanent isometric position, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's your king of the bros. Yeah, that's true. Think about, I I think we've talked about this before with homers. One of the craziest bicep pumps. You have to explain what a homer is first now. Well, let me explain this one. One of the craziest bicep pumps I've ever had. So anyone out there, if you have a child and you're carrying your baby, okay? And I would walk Lincoln, I'd walk uh, Sanderson, and I'd always get one of the twins. It's a lot harder with the twins because you have to have one of the twins. But, I mean, you, you don't have to, but you should. I would walk in a football hold with a baby. Yeah. And so I would walk here, and I'd have them swaddled, and I'd shush them, and I'd have a, a the pacifier. And so I'd, I'd, I'd shake them here like, shh. But we would walk around the block, and I would try to walk about two miles to try and get them to sleep. And then when we would get in the house, I'd play, I'd place them in the house. They'd go to, go to bed. But going to the isometric discussion, Lincoln was a huge baby. And as he was like around like eight to 10 weeks, I'd start to get cramps while I'd be holding him because he was starting to gain weight so much so quickly. You just didn't curl as often back then. Well, that's probably true. I was also a lot fatter and out of shape. But 
the isometric portion was we my biceps would be under tension for five to ten minutes and i try to switch him up here and there to try you know but without wake him waking up and this is where the homers come into play is like homers are an exercise where you walk at 90 degrees with dumbbells walk 20 meters you do 10 curls walk back 20 meters and you do 10 curls and the isometric hold is absolutely phenomenal for for one increasing that rate of force development or, or uh, higher threshold motor unit recruitment but also for long duration positions which your biceps are really good at yeah especially if you're i would think if you're in combat sports yeah like you end up especially if you're going for like some type of choke out like the it biceps be strain must be like intense yeah, yeah. It might be two minutes of doing that. Man. Yeah. I always think of Homer. I love introducing people to Homers for the first time. I'm like, just do 10 reps. Yeah. All right. That, I'm like, no, no, now you got to hold and walk. Yeah, what? Oh, that wasn't so bad. And then they go now to do, do it again. And then they go do the next like 10, and they're like, this is so hard. Yeah. And then they go to walk, and it's like, you got to hold the position. They're right. like, I can't do it. Right, right. Toughen up. Man. You like homers? That's your I best love, one. I love homers. How do my biceps look on camera? Can oh my goodness! That good? Was I? F no, I was flexing before we were filming. Before, yeah, I was just joking around with Jason. I was like, "Oh, with your shirt?" Yeah, because I. Do you feel special that you're wearing the the champ shirt? No, I just like it. It's it's real fancy. <laughs> it is nice. This it's is like stitched. Like, it looks stitched. Yeah, it's it's super nice. I feel like this would be one I would wear. Like I would wear this out to eat somewhere fancy because it's like it's expensive. Yeah, and I'm like it looks nice. I don't care that it's a basketball. Yeah, that's and true. No that is true, and no one would say anything. Yeah, like yeah. I could get a polo from like they'd be like, "Yo, this dude's doing isometric training." Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh wait, I wanted to talk about some other things, mainly around grip strength and isometrics. Grip strength, I think, is like that's another one with plate flips right you hit plate flips you have five plate flips and then you hold that pinch for a while and you do some type of shoulder raise that's where and one of the big things that we used to do with when with the brandy wine wrestling team we would hang off these monkey bars that we had at the barn and we would hang off them and then they'd do it they do this at the end who can get to three minutes who can get to three and a half minutes and they had a, a one and a half inch rung so, so you would use there. like garage grips to get yes all right yeah and you would you would have a challenge who could hang there the longest your lats what's interesting is that it's actually pretty good for your back because you're like decompressed and you'd see like kids would feel better in their abs like they'd feel a little bit stronger there but then their lats start to get lengthened they can rack a clean a little bit easier and their grip just blows up and that's also you know think about the sport like arm wrestling arm wrestling is a very very explosive isometric and you you meet that contact point and and that's where you've got to get creative it's in the rice right yeah and, and you have to get creative with training like okay can i hold this for a farmer's walk now i can do an explosive hammer curl i can do a plate a plate flip now i've got to hold that and that's where that that stuff pays off yeah. arm wrestling training for massive biceps yeah isometrics here we come all right over under you ready yep um Isometric pull-up holds with the chin above the bar. Overrated or underrated? Underrated. They're amazing. They're How long really... do you think you could hold it? Uh, a minute. A minute? Yeah. Challenge accepted. Do a short on it. It better be over a minute. Ooh. Put it out there. I'll try it. No no curl-up grip. I want over. The... Just holding. Ooh, yeah. that would be hard. If you can. I'd be impressed, Dane. That would be hard for a minute. I would give you a pat on the back for that one. Gold I also sticker. think that's just a great way to get younger kids to, to be able to do a pull-up. Just hold you. How long can you hold your chin over the bar, yeah. kid? Yep, and then lower as slowly yeah. as possible. Oh, uh, never mind. Can't be longer than a minute. Jason squashed it. Well, we can. You still have to it, do but, it though. Yeah, we could film it, but then make it shorter. All right, next one. Pause back squats. Overrated or underrated? No one's. Who's rating them? You are. Is it this overrated? Should, this is this. This should be an either or. Nope. <laughs> pause back squats is it overrated or underrated i think they're underrated because most people don't pause okay here's where i think it's stupid what i can't stand when i see people pause on the way up i want to clarify a pause squat to me i'm i mean pause a pause in the, the hole. Grass. yeah you're down there you're no there bullshit waiting. pausing halfway on the way up that's also stupid like if you're gonna pause Tell on the how way you really up, feel you should just do it off of a freaking boxes or off of pins or push into them so 
pause back squats in the hole, underrated, and it's one of the best ways to increase your pulling strength. So I just thought mobility. that was a given. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I triggered you there. I know how sensitive you can be sometimes. Snowflake, but you exercise. got me snowflaked on that one. Did I? No. Right. I was going to say, you you are red right now, and your legs, start, I am your legs started little. going too, yeah. so I know you, the little bit of anxiousness is kicking in. Actually, this it's funny you said that about the leg. Piros got pissed at me this past week in Cuba. He was like, do you ever stop moving your leg? No. You, we, we eat dinner and the whole table shakes because of you. <laughs> your mom never hit you for this. And I was like, no, not for that. No. <laughs> for All other right. stupid stuff. Pause below the knee snatch. Overrated, <laughs> underrated. Get out of here. Underrated. I, I underrated. That's movements. one of the best variations that you can do for snatching. All right. And for sports performance, if you ask me. All right. This is your either or. Okay. Who can benefit more from isometric training? BJJ athletes or rock climbers? Oh, wow. Jason let out a deep exhale on that one, That's too. That's a tough one. Okay, so who can benefit more? BJJ or who can benefit more from isometric training? BJJ or rock climbers? Yeah. My, my argument is going to be rock climbers. Because if they don't train it, they die. Well, uh, they have equipment for that. Fair, unless there you're, is uh, technology that exists. I've been following this French guy who's like the best boulder, like free climber in the world of all time. I, I think we talked about him in the past. Maybe but I can't remember his name, but uh, for in my in my mind, uh, I think with BJJ you definitely need to train it. I think. The the big aspect, the big benefit around it for rock climbing is that if you're training relative strength and you're doing a lot of explosive work and then you're you're doing a lot of isometric work, you're not going to gain a ton of weight. And that's what the thing with rock climbers is like you don't want to gain too much muscle mass because of the, the nature of the sport and you need to be recruiting and coordinated as optimally as possible. And that's what isometrics can do. Very nice. So that's what I would say. Um. I don't know if we have audience ones today. That's fine. All right, I gotta find them. Did I click on the wrong? Oh, what is this? Clear it. Hold on, I messed up my phone. Yep. One second. Just give me like yeah. two. From the or Discord. One. Well, in the interim, sign up for the Discord and uh the we, Reddit too. We could talk about maybe the coaches summit, like a question. For oh me. yeah. How we didn't talk about that in the, the mm. live one before. We should have. How? What was your feeling coming out of that? My feeling coming out of the coaches summit was freaking fantastic because it was something that I didn't even really want to do initially. And then when I had left, I was so motivated. Wait, and why didn't you? Want to not that I didn't want to do it. I was like, I was skeptical of it, and I was, I was hesitant more so. I didn't have the confidence. And then the oh first goodness. day when everybody was down here, I walked down the steps and I was like holy crap this is amazing but the the biggest thing that motivated me was one talking to everybody and realizing what matters most is that time together with coaches and i thought about all these different ways to improve it training sessions with them where we train with them we're actually going to get a workout in next year we're going to take we're going to take somebody through an actual workout as well so they can see progressions we're going to teach the progressions and we'll still have the theory stuff in the morning but it's going to be more about like the uh the meeting of everybody and coming together in short the dialogue song. yeah it, it was dude that was i was so excited like for various different reasons afterwards and and even i actually was just talking to one guy nick um on instagram today it's like all there's there's three or four of them that i've been talking to on instagram mm -hmm. just communicating with they're asking some questions and it's like their questions it, it, it was it was like a cool motivating thing for me that i now i'm like i want to do that so much better next year yeah i got to be there too i yeah. had a good time it was nice being yeah. there it was cool it was fun it was neat seeing everyone how much like how knowledgeable everyone was and what they had to offer and like what what they were seeking like just kind of their their motivation, their like self fire and things yeah, of that nature. Yeah. And it was cool. Like, and the way they would think around things and the questions they would ask and just like, it's like awesome. Yeah. You're like, thinking. Yeah. And I, I think for me, it brought it back. And I think I told you this is that 
so often, you know, we're talking to the camera where we don't see these people on a regular basis and we don't think about the impact that we can have. And it's like, if we can in, impact these coaches positively and create this big coaching community, they in turn can reach out to kids that they're impacting and it just spreads this great, easy to access freak training. And I think that that's the coolest part. That's the part about, that's literally what the coaches summit is. It's easy access freak training through knowledge sharing. And then you create that community and you, you develop that community with one another. And I thought that that was the most important part was the Friday night, the the after the shot comp even in when you know in between when we would go to the bathroom during lectures it talking just talking about training stuff that that's almost as important if not more important than the the you know x's and o's that we were discussing. oh yeah like in between like sort of the seminar part like when you were presenting the information sometimes it'd be like i would look at the schedule and be like this was supposed to be over 15 minutes ago and you look around and everyone was just like engaged yep like comp just talking about stuff ready to go and it it wasn't like nonsense it was all very Real. much like hey we're all here because we're kind of nerds about this stuff yeah. and into this stuff yep. and everyone here presenting is the same way like yeah. we could talk all day about this like yeah. let's let's roll. i wanted to tell you kevin had emailed us and he was like dude you guys do a, a really good job with the sports performance bible and you did a really good job with uh garage strength program design and that presentation the first presentation was a really good like short form version that encompassed all those lessons sweet yes yeah, so i good. thought that was cool yeah no i was sad like i talked to him a lot during there yeah i like i like him quite yeah, a bit no. he's, he's there was great. a lot of great people yeah there everyone was great no it was wonderful all right audience questions this one's from the the discord our boy keist Keith Kanegard comes so, on the YouTube live. Too. I've been making this little bit of mistake. They've been posting these questions in the Discord, and it will say my name, and I forget that I'm supposed to not answer them there uh, because they're for here. And okay. I've been typing responses, and I realized I did it. And I said to Jason, "I'm like, I gotta. St I don't even know if Jason saw it or whatever. It was just like I, I was like, I gotta stop doing this. I'm taking away like oh, yeah, making yeah. his life harder. Um, when should kids start doing uh, sports? Uh, strength and conditioning addition to their primary sport and how many times a week or is it better to see if you can throw an extra practice in the primary sport first Ooh. example kid 13 doing two football soccer practices a week plus football in the break at school and gym classes mostly and game tournaments in the weekend which wouldn't be uncommon here in denmark outside of the talent teams i think he should be lifting by 13 i would i would say by the by 10 to 12 you should be doing two to three days a week of resistance training I, I i just think it's like a good break from the other sports too what's the youngest you started here at garage and you can even say i mean lincoln was too. lincoln was we have a picture of lincoln squatting uh right up there yeah he was, he was three and a half there but when, when did we get uh, okay yeah. when were you more like um controlling you not so much, but like, hey, I want you to come in the gym and he go through like a workout or something like that. Even if it was like to mom putting him through it or DJ. Uh, let's see here. Can you see this? Yeah. yeah. It looks like you got the light right too. Yeah. Like that. Nice. Can you see it? Yep. Um, yeah, squat technique looks the same as it does now. Uh, <laughs> he squats like you, doesn't he? Yeah. He's he's a little better than me though with well, it. Probably Dude, he it. just cleaned 60 kilos. Did he? Yeah. Wow. Um, I want to say probably seven, eight, seven to eight. Yeah. So Sanderson's eight, and Caitlin was pretty much telling him he's going to have to start coming in once a week. Yeah, just – And she was like, he goes to gymnastics. He goes to gymnastics twice a week. Like, why can't he come in and lift? Yeah, what's the difference yeah. going in – especially, like, your your dad like runs a gym. Yeah, he's really good at yeah the gyms. Like, why shouldn't you come in and like and just do that? Do that. No, nah, it makes sense. Um, but I I think too it's like it, what happens with younger kids is they start to see the gym as like a break from their other sports and they start to like it more, and so that that just helps them learn like hey work ethics fun, this is a fun thing to do. Yeah. So, my son said he didn't want to do soccer this like go to a soccer camp i was like well what do you want to do he's like i don't know i'll just like can i just lift i'm like if we're gonna if you want to lift 
you're going to do it as a sport over yeah, the summer yeah, type of yeah. thing. And I'm like, I know a competition you can do in August. Yeah. So, oh, that'd be sweet if he does that. We'll see if he, he backed out on me last year. That'd be sweet. But this year he seems into it. Yeah, that would be awesome. See what happens. All right. Next one. So start him lifting seven, eight years old. Yep. If for fun, don't like don't beat him down. Yeah. Um this is from the Reddit. Joe I one two three one. Hey guys, high school rower here, and I was watching some recovery videos, included um, garage strengths, obviously. Since I'm training twice a day now, I might even get up to three times in the summer. I was wondering what you guys think is a better option for a sauna. An at-home portable one for 200 to $300 or a membership at my local YMCA, which has one for about 40 bucks a month. I would also get to swim for some different cardio with this one as well. What do you guys think? I would 100% go to the one at the Y. Dude, the ones that places like that clubs like that like la fitness or the y are usually legit like old school finish saunas they get to 190 degrees fahrenheit 100 percent, i would use that over those at home ones you use too much energy and they don't even get that hot that that would be my spend the 40 bucks yeah and you're gonna get better training there too like you can use a pool the y here in reading sweet dude it's crazy it's got a sweet weight room and it's got a huge pool it has two pools and it has saunas stuff like that and it, again it's like 35 40 you bucks. know what i hate about all those places and this is just me they always want to take my picture like i just want to give you my money yeah i just want to come in and get just me. let me give you just my money. card yeah like, here's my money let yeah. me go in you yeah, don't need funny. my picture i'm not going to steal anything i just <laughs> want to go like exercise yeah i can relate to that for sure huh? so if you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store. Get that easy access freak training. Until next time, peace. Later.